Today we look at aids to navigation. What uh, shapes, colours and light configurations to expect, and where they may be found and what roles they have to play. Aids to navigation are like road signs and they let us know what we are expected to do in certain areas in order to maintain a safe passage for ourselves and for other water users. They also inform us of potential dangers in the area. The International Association of Lighthouse Authorities, the IALA, has set up a standardization of the navigation aids worldwide. This used to be a case of multiple authorities having their own um, rules and regulations for their zones. But this has now been fine-tuned down to two zones, which is Zone A and Zone B. Zone A, um, which we sail in, is Ireland, England, Europe, France, most of Asia, uh, New Zealand and Australia. Whereas Zone B contains North, South and Central America, um, Japan, the Philippines and some parts of Southeast Asia. There are five main marker classifications, and they are lateral markers, cardinal markers, safe water markers, um, isolated danger markers, special markers, and new hazard markers. Lateral markers are probably our most familiar ones. They are the port can and the starboard cone, which you will see in Boyd channels. Lateral markers are probably amongst the most recognisable as our port can and starboard cone markers. In zone A, our port is marked as red, a can type top mark. And also the starboard cone has a triangular shaped top mark. So in zone A, we keep the red can port marker to our port side and the green cone starboard marker to our starboard side when we enter a channel or area marked with lateral markers. Keep in mind, however, that when we leave this same channel, we can expect to see these markers on opposite sides due to the direction of voyage being from the seaward end of the channel. Sometimes we pass through an area where the channel splits and we need a marker to show us which fork or side of the split to use. These are known as preferred channel markers. They are marked in both colours, with one colour being the predominant colour. The dominant colour represents which type of lateral marker it is. In region A, you would enter a channel to the left with a starboard marker on our right. In region B, the right channel should be the dominant colour, red. This becomes the port lateral marker. We should also expect the top marker to show the preferred channel in fading light, when colours are not easy to make out. Lateral markers also can be numbered, both physically and also on the chart, for easier identification. These numbers will be ascending order, as we advance through the channel. Port laterals are given even numbers and starboard laterals are given odd numbers and this practice is the same in both regions A and B. Cardinal marker boys are identified by their black and yellow markings. Also by the variations of their top marks made up of two triangles. The top marks also indicate the position of the black paint on the marker. This coincides with the top of the triangle being the black markings. So on the north cardinal marker we have the two triangles pointing upwards to north so the black is on top of the yellow. On the east the two points are at opposite ends of each other, so yellow is in the middle. On the south, we have 
the two arrows pointing downwards. So the black is on the base. And on the west, the two arrows meet in the center. So we have black in the middle and yellow on either side of it. An easy way to remember the east and west cardinal markers is east is like an Easter egg shape. And then the west is like an old fashioned wool spool or thread spool. So west winds wool. Another way of remembering the west marker is the nipped in waist here. It's like the Victorian uh, corsets. So you had a wasp waisted woman. Cardinals indicate the direction of safe water to avoid danger. You can use the clock to remember the light sequence. So this is a constant light. We have three flashes here, followed by a space. Six flashes, followed by a long space, so that it does not get confused between the other flash sequences. And here we have nine flashes followed by a space. The north is a continuous flash with no time intervals. In poor visibility, they may be charted as buoys or major lights, such as lighthouses. The light is confirmed on the chart by the light symbol or teardrop symbol. The next categories of navigation aids are the isolated danger mark, the new hazard marker, the safe water marker and special markers. The isolated danger marker has two top balls and a black and black, red, black markings. It usually has two light flashes. And so long as we avoid the marker itself at a safe distance, we will avoid the danger underneath it. The new wreck markers warn us of new wrecks or other recent factors that could affect safe passage that should be avoided at all times. They indicate a recent change that has not been charted yet. They will eventually be replaced by a permanent marker and included in the notice to mariners and charts going forward. The safe water marker has red and white vertical stripes and a distinctive uh, red ball top shape. These can sometimes be found in the middle of a channel where they act as a traffic separation scheme. Special marks are yellow. Their top mark is a sideways cross and they can be any shape. If they are lit the light is yellow and it flashes in a rhythm other than used by the cardinal isolated danger or safe water marks. These are usually found in areas to mark off submarine cables or pipes, military operation zones or a spoiled ground or sometimes for water sports in order to keep the area specifically for that water sport. Lights can be grouped according to their flash sequence and respective time intervals. A fixed light is a continuous steady light. Here you will see the period of the light marked off as dark light, dark light, dark light for a single occulting light whereas for a group you have dark light dark long flash dark light dark long flash and so on. The isophase has an equal um, duration of light and dark. The flashing phase has regular flashes with the duration of 
the light being less than the dark. So for a single flash, you have quick flash, long space of dark, quick flash, long space of dark. For the long flash, you have a long space between your flashes. And then for the group flashing, you have, for example, with the cardinal markers, you have three quick flashes followed by a space. Three quick flashes followed by a space. For the composite group, these are the light characteristics you would expect to find on the preferred channel markers that we spoke about earlier, whereby it is grouped as two plus one, and then your, your space, two plus one. Light can be sent out as a Morse code as well, um, often seen on certain light beacons or lighthouses for their identification. And then we also have the alternating light, which alters colours in successive flashes. So in this case we have a white and a red alternating flash. The other alternating flash we would be commonly seeing around our waters would be the new hazard marker, which has an alternating light of blue and yellow. Some marker beacons and major lights are charted with a magenta ring about it, and this indicates that it can be identified by radar according to the Raycon letter. This allows us to confirm our position and ensure that we are on course. Leading lights or markers can also be used for navigation. On shore, you will have close to the seashore, you will have the lower marker or beacon and then at a higher elevation you will have the second and the two markers line up with each other when you are on course. Together these two beacons make up the start of a line for our course to take to bring us in safely. For the purpose of demonstration, let us pretend these two candlesticks are leading lights. As we are, we are perfectly lined up. If we veer off course, you will see that we are not lined up anymore. We are off centre. So we need to bring our boat back into the central position and line up so that the, the lower marker is in line with the upper marker. And likewise, if we veer off to this side, we are no longer in line. And we need to bring our boat into the correct bearing for a safe entry into our port. On a chart, there is often a leading line marked and when this is then indicated, only follow the, the bearing once the lights or leading marks have been lined up. The lighthouse, the original aid to navigation, gives us first confirmation land is nearby and confirms our position by its light sequence. It may be fitted with a raycon and with a fog signal. A floating lighthouse is known as a land buoy. Our charts tell us the colour scheme and description of the land buoy for identification. A perch marks um, submerged rocks and can be lit. If you found this video of use, please continue to watch other videos in the series on navigation, uh, call regs and other safety considerations and passage planning.